Can you please take us through the uh, through the uh, Liquor First Resolve next fault use case? Um, and, and Zoltan is working um, as and is responsible for the VNF manager functions within Nokia, and he will take us to the uh, fault management use case. Okay. Over to you, Zoltan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, well, uh, in this demo, we will demonstrate how uh, fault recovery and management processes are changing in an NFV environment. So, uh, in a traditional way, traditional deployments, fault management usually went in a way that you first when you have a failure, you first you need to identify and localize a failure and then go there and fix it. That was a traditional. Now with NFE, this could be changed and improved in a way that once we have any kind of failure, we immediately go and recover first and then there is time to go and investigate what went wrong and what is causing the issue. So what we have here in this demonstration, let me just show you the overall architecture for a second. This is not that one, sorry. A lot of windows open. Okay, so we have here a multi-vendor NFP architecture composed of two tracks, basically. Uh, what is common we have? The NFVI virtualized infrastructure provided by HP Generation 8 Blade servers. And then we have VNFs from uh, VNF and uh, VNF Manager from Cisco and HP, NFV Orchestrator from HP. On the other track, we have the Nokia V PC Elements, Virtualized Network Functions, and we have the Nokia VNF Manager, uh, and then we have the Umbrella Management System provided by HP. So that is the overall architecture, just in a nutshell. So now I'm in the HP OSS console, which is the Umbrella Management System. And what you see here, that we have two different network service defined here and both are actually uh, 4G or LTE browsing. So we have a topology of VPC elements from Cisco and which are virtualized here. The same VPC elements from Nokia also virtualized and we have some bare metal uh, network elements here. And the connectivity is, is always checked via this track and the traffic is generated by a simulator. We are simulating the end devices in this front. So actually, until the simulator can browse the internet, we treat that the network service one, which is the Cisco part, and the network service two are okay. In case we identify any kind of issue in the network, then the OSS will go into this closed loop for controlling and recovering the service back to the normal situation. So now you see here that the network service two, which is the Nokia part that I will present now, is in okay state and every, every element is in service. What we have here is the Nokia Cloud Application Manager user interface. This is actually uh, an Etsy NFE compliant VNF manager responsible for the lifecycle management of the VNFs. In this case, we have VPC elements, as mentioned, virtualized uh, SPGW and virtualized MME service. So actually, um, what we will do demonstrate in this test that we have a failure in our virtualized infrastructure. Some resources will disappear unexpectedly from the cloud. And we will demonstrate how quick and effective it will be to, to identify the problem, correlate the different alarms, and just redeploy the service back to the normality. So what I will do as VNF manager is aware of the VNFs in the most detail. So Cloud Application Manager has its internal model, the knowledge how the VNF should look like in the infrastructure, and it compares it periodically, and once it sees some kind of deviation, it will take right away immediate action and start healing operations. So what I will do now, I will go to the OpenStack dashboard, and just terminate and delete one virtual machine, which is composed of, which is part of the uh, SPGW function of Nokia called C and G. Okay, so this virtual machine, GVNW, is deleted, so it's disappeared from the cloud. We go back now to Nokia Cloud Application Manager, which is, as I said, continuously monitoring each and every virtual resources which are related to this VNF. And you right away see here, there's there, there were some kind of unexpected events. First, what we do, we check and collect all these unexpected events from cloud trying to correlate and figure out what has happened and what is exactly which is to be, to be healed and, and repaired. So once we collected all this information and correlated the different alarms, 
then healing jobs will start right away and redeploying actually all the failed resources. It's also visible here that this GVN double GWN no, one node has some issues, which its current state in the model of the cloud application manager is different than what we see now in the reality, in the actual infrastructure. If you go back to the HP OSS console, via alarming from the Nokia cloud application manager, it right away realized that there is some issue with this network service too. And obviously as the Nokia uh, virtualized network functions has some built-in redundancy too. The network service is not affected, but still there is some issue to be fixed. We just lost the redundancy in this node in this example. So we will go into this closed loop for, by first detecting and correlating alarms from the virtualized infrastructure. This is get uh, uh, sent by the Nokia Cloud Application Manager. Then we verify the service impact, perform auto hailing right away, get back to normal situation and then repair hardware in case there is something to repair. So now it was quite quick. We are right away back to the normal service. So if I go back to Cloud Application Manager, shortly these jobs will finish and everything will go back to the, to the wanted situation. These jobs just been finished in this moment. So everything is now normal and Cloud Application Manager continues to monitor these applications. Obviously, if I refresh, the OpenStack browser, I should have seen the, G, uh, the node, the virtual machine is just reinstantiated and get back to normal situation. Okay, obviously this communication between the VNF manager and the OSS system was done by SNMP traps and all the related alarms were shown here. So actually first we had the failure and then auto healing started and then auto healing finished. So as you can see, all these actions were executed less than two minutes, which was a quite effective. So basically this whole demonstration is to prove how recovery and fault management can be effectively done 